spina bifida is an anomaly that occurs that you find in the fetus that results from lack of the normal closure of the spine. So not just the spine is affected, but the spine and the muscles and the nerves. There's open and closed forms of spina bifida, and the closed forms are skin covered. Those patients have a better prognosis. The open form um, is when the spinal cord or brain is exposed and not skin covered, and those patients are sicker. When a family comes to the fetal center, they meet with general fetal medicine to go over their treatment options. The oldest option and the standard option is a postnatal repair. It is certainly the safest option. The other option is opening the uterus during the second trimester and repairing the back while the baby's still a fetus. At Texas Children's, if you choose open fetal surgery, you are also eligible for a study where we do the repair fetoscopically. Being able to provide fetal surgery allows us to be able to repair the spina bifida before the baby is born and therefore reduce the risk of hydrocephalus and improve the function of the lower extremities. Having said that, the mother has to take the risk of having a big operation with an incision in her uterus that would then affect her ability to carry a pregnancy down the road and also a need for future caesarean sections down the road. The baby gets all the benefit, the mother gets all the risks. If you choose fetal surgery, uh, you decrease your risk of hydrocephalus by about 50%. As a result, the need for a shunt was reduced. So a shunt is when we actually put a little tube into the brain to drain fluid into the abdomen. So the shunt occasionally can get infected, it can get blocked, it can need to be replaced, and that re results in repeated operations for these kids. So the fact that with in utero surgery we can actually reduce the hydrocephalus and reduce the need for shunt significantly improves the lifestyle of these children and not have to, having to worry about repeated shunts and the complications that that offers. The fetoscopic surgery that we perform here is quite unique. We've changed our technique in a way to address some of the concerns and limitations of the other programs. So again, increase the potential for benefit for the fetus while reducing the potential risk to the mom. So the way we do it, I think we're one of we're the only center that does it the way we do it. We open the abdomen and, and go to the uterus directly. And we also use two ports, bringing the fetus's tissues to close over the defect. Other places would use a, a glue and a patch and things to, to close it in. We have um, steered away from that. So we put carbon dioxide gas into the uterus and now can look at the fetus and perform the same closure on the, in the fetus. But we can then do it through two small little holes on the uterus. The potential benefit for this for mom obviously is she doesn't have a big uterine incision and can have a much better obstetric outcome. We're hoping that this would also show the same benefit for the fetus our short-term results show that that's the case, but the long-term results we have to follow to make sure that the fetus is having the full benefit like they did with the mom's trial as well. Even for those who are doing it fetoscopically, we still reserve the option to convert to open if we think for any reason we can accomplish the thing. Because again, we want to make sure for that fetus that we're giving the fetus the best option to have that closure of the spinal bifida. With a fetoscopic repair, it's a bigger commitment by the mom. She has to undergo surgery between 19 and 26 weeks. We usually perform the surgery the 24th or 25th week of gestation. They're in the hospital for five to 10 days, depending on how the uterus responds to the surgery and how the baby's doing. And then for the rest of the pregnancy, it's modified bed rest, uh, which means really nothing more strenuous than walking. The postnatal repair is what's been in existence for decades. I mean, children with spinal bifida are identified after birth. Fortunately, now that we know the diagnosis ahead of time, these, we, these children can be born in a facility where that care can be provided shortly thereafter. It's important also at the time of delivery to ensure that there's an injury to that exposed spine as the baby's been delivered. So we prefer for many of these children to be delivered by caesarean section, again, so that that exposed spine is not rubbing through the birth canal and causing more injury during the process of delivery. Now once the baby is born, a lot of care is taken to make sure that we protect the spinal cord that's exposed so that the child doesn't develop meningitis from infection of that exposed spinal cord. And then as soon as it's feasible, the neurosurgeons will take the child to the operating room to now create a closure over that area. 
think the main reason to choose Texas Children's is because it's truly a multidisciplinary program with active participation by not only neurosurgery and pediatric surgery and maternal fetal medicine, but also urology and pediatrics and physical medicine and rehabilitation, radiology, anesthesia, hundreds of people who discuss and manage patients from before they're born to the time that they're adults. Texas Children's Fetal Center is one of the unique fetal centers out there in the, in the world. And I think part of the uniqueness is the the integration of all the different specialties and all the different elements. Very few fetal centers can boast of, of having a comprehensive, full-fledged obstetric facility right next to a comprehensive, full-fledged, top-tier pediatric facility. And that's what we have here at Texas Children's Hospital. We have the pavilion for women that has all the high-risk OB care you could ever imagine. It's just across the bridge from you know, Texas Children's Hospital, one of the top hospitals in the country that makes it unique and special.